the senior enlisted advisor from every branch of service, is set to testify before Congress. I'm gonna tell you what they plan on talking about. I'm gonna tell you about the solutions. Please, throughout the video, comment. Guys, let me know what you think. Let me know what you think the problems are, the issues are, all of it. The topic of conversation is about the quality of life issues that our troops are facing. I'm gonna tell you what they plan on talking about. I'm gonna tell you about the solutions that have been floated to these problems. And I'm gonna give you my opinion, my unadulterated opinion. I'm also gonna tell you what I think could happen. There's a couple ways I see this going. Starting off with the issues that are going to be talked about. These include the living conditions of the barracks that our service members are in. The quality of the dining facilities that our service members are forced to eat at and access to health care. These issues are, are pretty significant, but I want to start out with the living conditions of the barracks. I have had junior soldiers in my care, junior service members. I know that they can be dirty, but the conditions of some barracks, because they are old and they are not maintained properly by installations, is unacceptable. The systemic issue of mold has become like a, like a running joke across the military. It's not just the army. It's every single branch of service. I am really glad that this issue is going to get discussed because quite frankly, it disgusts me. Right? You see that little play on words there. It's completely ridiculous. And with the amount of money that gets floated around for the maintenance of barracks buildings and, and installation facilities, there is absolutely no reason for us to have the major problems that we have. Other things that service members often complain about are the poor state of like laundry rooms in barracks. Soldiers living in the barracks and service members in general living in government barracks are given laundry, laundry rooms. So washers and dryers. It's not that uncommon for you to find many, many of the washers and dryers in an inoperable state, okay? And when you have hundreds of people living in the same building, that's not gonna work. Moving on to the dining facilities. Dining facilities, they have to cook for tons and tons of people. And I love my cooks. I got nothing but respect for you. Honest to God, cooks work worse hours than many service members do. They, they have a tough job. But the options available, sometimes the cleanliness, not always up to snuff. And that's completely unacceptable when service members are not given money, like I am as a married service member, to go buy food and then Oftentimes, they don't have any way to cook it in their rooms. They're not, many service members don't have access to like an oven or a stove in their room. And most of the time, policy dictates that they will not have things like hot plates or crock pots, what have you. And finally, access to health care. Okay? Access to health care is a frustrating thing for all service members. Okay? There's generally not enough providers available for the amount of service members that that provider is supposed to service. Right? You may have one provider for up to a thousand service members or more. Getting an appointment can be difficult uh, and there are many other problems that come along with getting access to healthcare as a service member. Now the military is great if you get in a car accident and you're on your deathbed, they'll make sure that you don't take the long nap. But outside of that, it can be very difficult to get what we need as service members <laughs> as far as healthcare is concerned. And this is not a dig on the provider. This is not a dig on the medical service members. I know the vast majority of you are doing the best that you can with a really frustrating situation. One of the solutions was to make junior service members pay tax exempt. This is cool. This is a cool idea. It would put more money in the pocket of service members, which I don't think is a bad thing. Okay, A lot of times service members will buy food to bring it back to the barracks, right? And, and that way they can supplement the food that's provided at the DFAC. Nobody wants to be eating the same thing all the time, so I think that's great. It would also allow service members to maybe get off post care. Things like chiropractic, for example, are not covered under TRICARE most of the time for like off post. So, you know, a little bit of extra money, maybe a service member can go see a chiropractor. Another solution that was floated is up to two years of leave for parents. Giving people time off to spend with their kids is tied to quality of life. I was all for the leave policy, right? The first time I took parental leave when I had my first child, I got 10 days and I actually took an additional four on that, four on top of that. And I actually got a lot of crap from people at my unit for that. Not my leadership, but some of my peers, right? They gave me crap for that. And then they bumped it up to 21 days for primary caregiver. And now they're bumping it up to, they've bumped it up to 45 days. 
for 12 weeks. Is that 45 days? I don't know. They've bumped it up a lot, okay? There's a lot. You get a lot more leave now than you did when I first got leave, and I think that's great. Two years of leave for parents. I'm not sure how that could be managed at the unit. How undermanned we are, I don't know if that is feasible, okay? I'd love for people to get it. I don't know if it's realistic, right? And so I think that'll come out in the testimony as well. Now, there's a few ways that I could see this going. Number one, there's a lot of discussion, a lot of head nodding, a lot of acknowledgement of problems, and no actionable solutions produced. And I have been in meetings where that happens. Okay, a lot of this. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, that's, that's definitely an issue. That's definitely a problem. Uh, yep, we should take a look at that, and then nobody takes a look at it, and nobody does anything about it. Okay, that's one way that it could go. Now, I believe the recruiting crisis is partly at least what spurred this in the first place. Okay, what spurred people to be taking a look at these issues that our service members are facing in their quality of life. Okay, we force unmarried service members to live in the barracks, and we force them to eat of the defect because we don't give them a housing allowance so that they can get off-post housing, right? And in most cases, service members are not allowed to love off-post anyways, other than a few exceptions. And then we don't force them to eat the defect, but we don't give them additional money on top of what they're paid for food like married service members get. I get a couple hundred bucks and it's supposed to offset the cost of my groceries, okay? We don't give them those things. And so if we're telling them, hey, you're gonna use these facilities, those facilities should meet a minimum standard, okay? Now, the people running the defects, love them. God, I love the cooks, okay, again. But that they, they need support, okay? The barracks need support. And so I really hope some actionable solutions are produced from this, okay? When you're forcing somebody to do something, you got, you got, you got to help them out. You got to give them a minimum, right? Now, why are the senior enlisted talking to Congress about troop living conditions? Well, if you're not in the military, you don't have a lot of experience in the military or you don't have a lot of experience in the military, the health and welfare of troops is NCO business. There's commissioned officers, there's non-commissioned officers, and there's warrant officers in the United States military. And non-commissioned officers are responsible for the health and welfare of the troops. This is inarguable, right? This is, this is a fact, an objective fact it is. And so that is why our senior enlisted in each branch of service are talking to Congress about troop living conditions, okay? For the Army, it's the Sergeant Major of the Army, right? Which is Sergeant Major of the Army, Michael Weimer, okay? Each branch of service has a different title. How we missed the opportunity to call the Space Forces, Sergeant Major of the Space Force Master Chief, I don't know, right? I can't remember what his title is, but there's Chief in there, I think. I'm not sure. Come on, right? We, we need to do better. We need to do better. It should be Master Chief. I just glitched. This might be the downfall. This might be it. Right? You guys might be seeing literally the fall of mandatory funding. Yeah, our senior enlisted advisors to each branch of the service and then the senior enlisted advisor to the Joint Chiefs, they'll be talking to Congress. They'll be hopefully airing some of these issues. Hope, like really what it's gonna come down to is getting funding and making a plan, right? We gotta solve these problems. We can't be lethal as a force if our troops don't have decent places to eat and decent places to live. As always, guys, please comment your thoughts. Tell me what you think. I wanna know how you feel. I wanna know what you think about what's going on.